Today I will be showing how to paint Blue Ridge Mountain. I suggest to use 140 pound watercolor paper, preferably cold pressed. My size is 9 by 7 inches. I will use three different brushes. One is wider, hockey, full wash, medium size and the smaller size for the detailed painting. You would need five colors. Paints gray, French ultramarine, cerulean blue, Windsor red, and Bo Sienna. Here I will test my colors. And this is my little study and the reference for my painting. I will be starting with painting the sky. First, I will need to wet my paper with the wider brush. Make sure it is moist throughout. I'm not wetting paper all the way to the edges and leaving a little border. It is a good idea to wet your paper twice because paper will absorb all the water. By mixing French ultramarine and cerulean blue, I will have my first color for the wash of sky. Using medium-sized brush, starting from the top, apply first color, slowly moving to the center. Clean your brush with water and make the lower side of the sky softer. My paper is attached to the wall, but of course you can paint on the table. Mix of Windsor Red and Raw Sienna is my next color. I collected it on my brush and I'm removing excess of the extra water on the napkin. Now, starting from the bottom, slowly move to the center, apply your second color. Clean your brush with a napkin and blend both of the colors. I'm going to paint a few clouds with a mix of paint gray and blue ultramarine. It is very important to remember that you can only paint clouds while the paper is still wet. You will have about 10 minutes since you started painting the sky until the paper is dry. When you feel that the paper is already starting to dry, you'll need to stop. Fixing your mistakes is gonna just make it worse. Too much water on a brush is also going to cause problems. That's why you need to find a fine line in between wet and dry. I often use a paper towel to get extra wetness from my brush. Now you would need to let your paper dry. You can either let it dry by itself or use a hair dryer. The way to check is to touch your paper. If it feels still cold, that means it's not fully dry. The next step is to mix cerulean blue and a little bit of French ultramarine and start painting our mountains. The furthest mountain would appear the lightest because it disappears in the masses of atmosphere. That's why use plenty of water in order to mix your first color. So I would paint the peaks of the mountain, then wet my brush and soften the lower edge. You would need to let it dry before continuing with the second layer of mountains. This time you would to add a little more of an intense color. Repeat the first step, paint the peaks of the mountains, wet your brush and soften the lower edge. You to continue to proceed with one layer after another, repeating with painting the peaks and softening the lower edges of the mountains. You can paint as many peaks and layers as you like, but don't overdo it. The closer layers of the mountains would reveal more details. We will paint a few of the trees that stick out. It helps to keep your brush vertical 
in order to create those little peaks and of course the intensity of the color must be much more stronger. You would need to soften the lower edge as well. Don't forget about that. And we'll paint one more final layer of the mountains with the trees sticking out. In order to make those little peaks to appear more visually attractive, while the layer is still wet, you can add intense color on the tops. For the very front layer of the mountains, I'm going to be using the pure, not diluted, paints gray color. I will use my brush very freely and will create some rocks, maybe some grass as well. Here comes my crooked tree. This tree is growing in a very rough condition. The land is rocky, that's the top of the mountains, maybe cold and windy. That's why it would appear very crooked. One or two trees for this painting is quite enough. The final touch is to sign your painting.